to me, skins are something that you don't look at as a critical piece of equipment. They're awesome, they allow you to go uphill easy, but if you have a, a skin malfunction, it can ruin your day in a hurry. Yeah, right. no doubt there. For starters, having really good skin maintenance is super important. But when I do a lot of transitions, I wanna be sure that when I'm taking my skins on and off, I'm not fouling them and letting the snow get into them at all. In fact, sometimes, especially with these early rise tips, they get a little snow on the tip. Yeah. And when I take them off, I'm actually scraping it off or when I store it, because yeah. I want them to stick when we transition. And so. I think along those lines, when you put the skin on the ski, make sure there's no snow, no snow or even moisture on the base of the yeah. ski. Yeah, I don't want like to get them too hot. Even in a hut, I'll just throw them right in the basket so they can get some air, but yeah. not, not yeah. even heat so much. Yeah, exactly. Ambient air. You know. And I think there's the obvious things. Don't yeah. drop them in the pine needles or the dirt or get right. dog hair on them because that'll all affect the glue. Right. If you do drop it in the snow, that's... That's not great, but you can rub that on your pant and, and get rid of it. And it's and a, that's a short-term well. issue. Yeah. Whereas if you get dog hair, or dirt, or whatever, that's going to ruin the skin for. Ruin it for foul. Yeah. What about the backing? You know, the skins oh, the, come the with cheat that sheet. backing. I know for me, if I'm touring on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't tend to put those on because it's just a pain in the neck. But I use it. I definitely like them for longer-term storage. Well, you know, like a week or or beyond. Yeah, season know? seasonal storage for me. Okay. And I don't like to deal with them otherwise. I've heard some people like to use them when the, the glue is super new, just because it makes it a little easier to separate. But right. personally, I've found other ways to deal with that as well. Huh. And that depends, too, on the skin and the skin manufacturer, because yeah. all the glue is different. And, and some of them are really hard to pull apart, and others aren't. But I agree. I don't think, I wouldn't recommend using those when you're out in the field. But for storage, yeah, sure. A lot of times, if, it's, if you're noticing through the day that the skin is getting progressively icier i'll i'll ski down with them in my jacket so you can warm them actually up. warm them up thaw them out a little bit you know you can just tuck them in the top uh then you don't even have to take your pack off for the transition whip your ski off put them back on but that can really thaw out an iced up skin pretty well as rob hess once said there's a lot of different ways to skin a skin personally i, I tend to just go about 50 50. that works for me pretty well i leave the tip a little bit exposed so that when I pull it off for a transition, I can hook that tip and I just start the first, you know, 30 centimeters to get it on there. Nice clean ski, get a little adhesion. And I go straight to my hip and try and get it nice and straight, pull tension, stretch the skin because they inevitably get a little moist and stretch more. But then I've got a little tension already and it's nice and centered. A friend of mine showed me a great way to fold skins when it's really windy out because you've got six feet of flypaper here in the wind. It's sticking to itself. It's sticking all over you. So if you can control that, it makes it a lot easier. First thing I do always now is turn my binding so that the brake comes down because I've seen people drop their ski and then the ski goes away. So put the brake on. But I'll pull from the base first, halfway. And then I'll pull it right to the tip. And you need to put the tail of the ski in the snow to do this. And that way I've got the midpoint of the, of the skin. I pull that back up to the tip. And you can see I've never let go of the skin. It's never flapping in the wind. Lay it down right on top of the skin and then just pull it up. And it's a great simple fold and uh, I just leave them that way. I don't know, what do you do? Well, I. I use a variety of techniques like you guys. I, it's sort of for me, it's not, you know, which do I prefer? I just use a variety depending on the situation. And that's a great technique. One I use and sometimes show people that are maybe are a little bit shorter and having a little more difficulty putting the ski out like that is doing the thirding. I'll start from the tail, okay, and I'll pop it in, all right? And I go up, you know, somewhere about halfway, you know, or so. And then I take this section right here and I come back on itself like that, okay? Um, and this can work in the wind too. Yeah. And for a shorter person, sometimes this can't be advantageous. And then bring it up like this, okay? And then bring it in like so. So I always have hold of it and I don't have, like you said, the big long fly paper flapping yeah. around, you know? And, and, one, and, and sometimes if they're super uh, sticky, this can be a nice technique only because 
for the smaller individual when they go to put them on they don't have to pull quite so much they can pull one section right there get it on there and then they can work further sections off of it like that right here and get it on like that so that's one technique I'll often use and show folks like that. Yeah. So, I think one of the most common failures people will have with skins is in the springtime. When you got wet, saturated snow and the skin gets soaking wet and then you go around the corner into the north facing slopes, that skin will clump up with snow. Put some preventative wax on there, rub wax on before you go out because once they get wet, it's really tough to, to dry them out in the field. So you're kind of, you're kind of SOL then. I have this little side pocket in my pack right there, and that's a great yeah. spot where I keep uh, the glob and stopper wax. and yeah. the yeah. scraper because, you know, scraping those skins. Have you ever used the technique where friends are icing up and you turn your skis on side and have them skin over your... your the so, skis? Oh, yeah, the, right. the, the it's like the big scraper. Like, like so. the big you scraper. scraper yeah. you got to kind of have a nice flat spot because mm -hmm. if it's on a hill, it doesn't work very well. Right. But that's one, a technique for doing yeah. it. What do you guys carry in your repair kit if you if you lose a tip? Black Diamond has, you know, those those tips where you can screw it through the, the skin. Right. So I, yeah. I'll i keep one of, one of those. I used to use a little piece of accessory cord can mm -hmm. simulate that. That could work really too well, well too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of different things will work for it. Yeah. So have a plan. So there's a lot of things to think about with skins, but good maintenance habits and having a little backup plan with some bits and bobs to fix problems will go a long way.